Okay, let's talk about timelines. This is a question that I get all of the time. Am I ready to get pregnant right away? I just got off birth control. Or I had my baby 12 months ago and I'm starting to think this might be a time to get pregnant again. There's tons of questions around timing of things. So I wanna be, um, vid I wanna share first that uh, our timeline is often quite different than the bigger picture universe capital U timeline. And really kind of sitting back and relaxing and trusting in that can make a world of difference. However, there are things that are in our influence uh, and choices we can make to put forward the best possible outcome. So I wanna talk about a couple of scenarios. When it comes to any person, whether you've been on hormonal birth control or whether you have never had that in your life, the ideal physical and emotional preparation timeline is at least 90 days before getting pregnant because that is the amount of time that the follicles are developing and that the basis of who might become your baby will be in process, will be growing, and will be susceptible to inputs. And that applies both to the, <clears throat> the male and the female involved in this, in this conception journey. Now, some people, if they've had high stress in their lives, if they've been on hormonal birth control for an extended period of time, or if they've had um, any sort of addictions or injuries or illnesses or a prolonged use of antibiotics or any health concerns, autoimmune conditions, um, hormonal challenges like PCOS, uh, endometriosis, the preparation of the body might start way before a three month mark, way before a 90 day mark. And uh, it's kind of like the more the merrier if it's serving you. Meaning if your body is responding well to making lifestyle and dietary shifts, if emotionally, if mentally you're feeling good in that process, you're not feeling uh, frustrated or overwhelmed or in fear, then having an extended timeline like six months or even a year might be exactly what you need. And based on your unique circumstances, you're going to be looking at making shifts in your daily dietary uh, nutrition, nutrition intake with what you're eating, with how you're eating it, with what you're drinking and how you're drinking it, and then with what supplements, if any, you're taking to complement that normal intake of, of whole foods diet. Uh, Next, you might be looking at your physical activity and how your body and its physical strength are. So what sorts of exercise you're doing, uh, how you're moving your body on a regular basis. There is, we're fortunate, there's a lot of data out there that shows that having some physical intensity, some cardiovascular movement can be extremely helpful. However, there is a scale that if it gets tipped uh, and there's too much stress or intensity in the body, that can actually uh, be an inhibiting factor in your own physical health and your own, your own ability to conceive. The next linked with stress of the physical body is stress of the emotional body. So you might be looking at how your uh, professional work, if you have paid work or, or unpaid work, how that is leading to joy and growth and freedom versus stress and constriction and anxiety. Um, and so starting to make changes, if not in the external, like where or what or how you're working, perhaps the internal, the boundaries you're setting, how you're showing up around your professional work. Uh, that's, a, that's a big topic, <laughs> I guess all of these are. And then the, uh, the fourth area that you may start to look at in terms of preparing your body is getting to know your natural cycles. Now, this is something that continues to blow my mind that is not taught in schools and mothers don't often talk to little girls about because they don't know themselves, but there's actually a very limited window in the month that pregnancy, that conception can even happen, like a matter of days. 
Uh, so if you did have a high school gym teacher that told you that if you have if you get if you have sex anytime pregnancy can happen like that that is very untrue for better or for worse uh, we as women uh, our cycles are broken down into four distinct phases the follicular phase which is the first more or less seven days after the completion of the period that's when the follicle is being prepared and when we have kind of this build up getting ready for ovulation which is the secondary phase this is the phase when pregnancy can occur and so this is when the body's actually the, uh, the uh, an egg is released through the fallopian tubes and there is the possibility of conception uh, following ovulation which actually occurs only on one day within that more or less seven day period of time we then shift into the luteal phase which is the kind of preparation phase for the period if conception hasn't occurred it's the wind down phase where the bodies and the hormones are shifting to signal that it's time to kind of clean out and clear the uterus and release uh, so then the final phase is the the period menstruation which can be around seven days so um the the, the catch is that each woman will have their own distinct number of days. So I'm speaking on average when I say about seven, uh, but some cycles can total far shorter or far longer. Um, and there's a pretty big range of normal as well. So because we can't exactly ask our bodies to do the calculation and pop out a number for us, we have to rely on different signs and symptoms within our um, the physical body and our mood and that will allow us to start to get to know. Now it can take a couple of months to, to really understand if we have a regular cycle and what it looks like so that uh, we can actually be a little bit intentional with the timing of when we, when we have sex. Uh, in preparation for a baby. Um, and we are lucky, There are there's a lot of technology out there so we can buy ovulation strips, which is basically, um, will tell you if you're ovulating based on when you pee. Um, but a really simple way that I love to share because it's something that will serve us for our whole lives and allow us to make kind of good decisions for our bodies based on it is the tracking of our cervical fluid. Now, uh, this is a new word for you. Essentially, um, you can think about it as any of the discharge that you might find in your undies uh, when you're going before you, you know, go to the bathroom. It's super normal and healthy and important for um, for us to have discharge, and you'll notice that the consistency and the amount will change throughout our cycles. Makes sense, right? So typically, and again, this is a very general way of explaining it, but typically. Uh, following the completion of our menstruation, of our period, we'll start to, over the course of the follicular phase, begin to have uh, day by day a little bit more and more um, cervical fluid, and it typically is more of like a lotion consistency. Uh, it's more, has like more of a creamy consistency usually, or sometimes a little bit watery, but um, it definitely is something that doesn't necessarily feel super sticky, but um, it is yeah, usually more like a white or like a light colored um, tint. And then as we approach ovulation, that cervical fluid changes. It becomes um, basically the consistency of egg whites. Um, it's very sticky. If you were to pick up a little and put it between your fingers, it would stretch. And it's typically a pretty clear um, color. And the close, the more we experience that, the more we know ovulation is on the horizon. And it's really cool because I mean, our bodies are so smart and that, that consistency of, of cervical fluid is actually designed to basically in, um, become like a, a safe haven and a home and a protector for any sperm that enter into our system. So if we are having sex around the time of having this fluid, even if it's a couple of days before ovulation, pregnancy and conception can still occur because the sperm are basically uh, ensconced in that fluid and it allows for it to kind of 
be held and, and stay safe and alive um, against all of the acidity in the vagina and all of our body's natural defenses until that egg is released. Following ovulation, the consistency will once again shift. In some cases, it will kind of taper off or shift back to more watery or more uh, lotiony, um, or it will just kind of wind down before the arrival of our period, the menstruation. Uh, and some women are super regular. They have a 24 day cycle on the dot every single month and other women will find that their bodies are much more inconsistent. And there are also lifestyle and dietary changes that we can make based on how our bodies are, are going through our cycles each month. So for uh, women that I work with that have quite inconsistent cycles at the start, that's when we're doing a lot of kind of heavy lifting around hormone support and rebalancing, which can bring more consistency. More consistency means that we have more knowledge such that we can make choices around the timing for attempting possible conception, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so the final thing I wanna bring forward today, even though there's about 100 things preparation-wise, but this is an important one, um, and really I wanna include before I, before I close out, which is to start to make emotional and spiritual preparation and potential shifts, openings. The conception process um, can be all the things. It can bring up a lot. Uh, within our own selves, within the relationships in our lives, and within the relationship with our our partner on this journey. And so getting kind of emotionally and spiritually fit um, or working on that kind of regulation can make a world of difference, not just in the conception possibility, but in our own experience as we're on this journey. So a couple of practices that... Um, I find really helpful and we can go into detail another time but just off the top of my head um, is to implement a daily meditation or breathwork practice even something very very small but something that's consistently done every day another one is to start a daily gratitude journal practice and this is one that is like depositing a small amount of money in a savings bank that will that will compound in interest and pay off in infinite amounts over the long term um, because like I said ups and downs and where we want to go is to find more of that space of um, of internal kind of equanimity and th these types of practices can be really helpful and then a third one is if you have a spiritual practice or connect with kind of a higher power of any sort is really being consistent and dedicated to a prayer practice or a bit of a kind of a communication with higher power, guardian angels, however you want to call it, practice. Um, so those are some things I wanted to bring forward today around thinking about timelines, um, although I kind of drifted more into the, the how and the what, but giving yourself a nice juicy window of time where there's no pressure on actually getting pregnant and you're allowing yourself to really be with your body and your life and making some shifts and starting to open and prepare because it really is a process and a path is such, such a gift. Now, if that's something that's not available to you, that's also okay. People can get pregnant really, really quickly um, and it's wonderful and the baby is healthy and great. Like there's no one way to do it. But uh, in my experience, in my practice, having a bit of a timeline can be extremely supportive for not just the the ability to get pregnant and stay pregnant, but also for the uh, kind of experience during pregnancy, as well as the health of the baby. So uh, with that, I'm going to uh, close out for today. Thank you so much for listening and for being open to these considerations. Know that I'm here in loving support if you wanna talk or go through what I'm sharing in more detail. And I wish you a beautiful day ahead.